It's Memorial Day weekend. While our focus here at church is not on leaning too much into secular holidays, Memorial Day feels different, and especially somehow this year, Memorial Day feels different. Memorial Day is different because it is a time set aside for us to consider the cost of war and the impossibly high price paid by many who have given their lives to protect and defend their nation. Memorial Day is heartbreakingly real in its reminding of us that families are forever changed. Lives are forever lost, and we are a people, you and I, who owe a debt of gratitude to those who have fallen in Vietnam, in Normandy, in Afghanistan, and in the all too many places where young men and women put their lives literally on the line on behalf of the ideal of the United States of America. So the challenge of marking Memorial Day is real. George Tiger is a chaplain in the United States Army, and he puts the longing for peace and the debt of gratitude we have to pay in this way. He says this, I serve in the United States Army. I support the readiness of those who have and will fight and win the wars that our civilian leaders call us to fight. I love the people I am called to serve, knowing full well the dreadful reality that we will one day face again. He goes on to say, Memorial Day is not to be celebrated. It is to be observed, scrutinized, and witnessed on behalf of the true witnesses of our human failure to love our neighbor as ourselves. He goes on to say, they are ghosts now, haunting lives with the gift of remembrance so that we will not forget their living, but even more that the grief of remembering will create in us who remain a yearning for peace that will stir us to action. On Memorial Day, we pause to remember and allow ourselves to feel the grief over the ongoing ways that war continues to consume so many futures. And on this particular Memorial Day, it feels doubly poignant because on this particular Memorial Day, we are asked to consider where we were a year ago on Memorial Day. We were in relative lockdown. You might remember. We were separated from each other out of a deep concern for each other and for those who worked so hard to bring us through the challenges of the pandemic. We were separated from each other and through the pandemic, we have come to understand, please God, in extremely urgent ways, that we are never separated from each other, ever. We breathe the same air. We learned that well. We drink from the same wells. We depend on the wisdom and the abundance of our shared earth. We weep over our dead and over the broken places in our lives, and we celebrate new life and new possibilities, and all of our lives are lived so powerfully in connection with all that has been, all that is, and all that will be. We live connection. It is the very beat of our hearts attuned to the rhythms of creation. So given our need to remember God's nature and our creaturely presence in the midst of it, 
I invite us to turn to Psalm 29, which is found in your hymnal on page 761 and will be found on the screen in front of you. And as we sing and pray these words together, I invite you to take them into your heart to remember who you are as we memorialize on this day. Let's pray this prayer. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. With joy the Lord proclaim. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. here's what I want to say about that song and about the reading from Romans. These things that tell us that because we are willing to follow Jesus Christ, because we are willing to allow our hearts and imaginations to be sparked, you and I we are inheritors of God's grace and God's abundance. And here is what I want to say about the terrible reality of Memorial Day. And here is what I want to say about this Memorial Day as we dare to walk into physical communal life together. Because it takes courage to re-engage, doesn't it? I want to say this about the jumble of pain and praise and promise that is life. Life is complex, isn't it? And life is challenging, and life is stunning, and life is painful, and God knows all of these things, right? So it feels so important in this house of the Lord who shakes the cedars of Lebanon. It feels so important to acknowledge that we are a people who are living trauma. We are a people who are living with trauma. We have endured, and we are enduring so much. 
as we sort out the meaning making that we experience through living this pandemic life in which we find ourselves. And what I want to say this morning is, of course, of course we are tired. Are you tired? Of course we are relieved, yes. Of course we are chastened. And of course we are called to attention as we live into and unpack this trauma and this blessing which is the reality of our life in these days. Poet Marge Piercy speaks blessing in this way in her poem, The Art of Blessing the Day. It is one of my favorite of many favorite poems, but it ends with these words. The discipline of blessings is to taste each moment. The discipline of blessings is to taste each moment, the bitter, the sour, the sweet, and the salty, and to be glad for what does not hurt. The art is in compressing attention to each big and little blossom of the tree of life, to let the tongue sing each fruit, its savor, its aroma, and its use. Attention is love. What we must give to children, mothers, fathers, pets, our friends, the news, the woes of others. What we want to change, we curse. And then we pick up a tool. Bless whatever you can with your eyes, your hands, and your tongue. And if you can't bless it, get ready to make it new. I'll share with you a story by Gabriel Daly. A blind man was begging in a city park, and someone approached him and asked him whether people were giving generously, and the blind man shook a nearly empty tin. And his visitor said to him, well, let me write something on your card. And the blind man agreed. Well, that evening, the visitor returned. Well, how did things go today, he asked the man. And the blind man showed him a tin full of money. And the blind man asked the man who had written on his card, what on earth did you write on that card? Oh, said the man, I merely wrote, today is a spring day, and I am blind. Here's my prayer for you and for me and for this church and for the world that we are called to inhabit and sing. May we see each other's need. May we be stirred to compassion in order that those around us might experience and savor abundance. And may we, as we encounter all that life has for us, the gratitude and the griefs, the celebrations and the mournings, may we open our souls to an awareness that we each have the power to write on signs in order that others might see and feel abundance. You hear what I'm saying? There are so many, including our own selves, who feel sometimes light-starved and spring-hungry. We have wisdom, we have song, we have story to share, and we are so blessed in our connection with each other and with all that is holy in God's worth and in God's world. Each and all we encounter are sacred. Our scriptures make promises and our scriptures call us to remember that God's grace sings through our hearts. So on this day, on this dense emotional day, 
when we remember and we mourn, and like that fiddlehead fern, we unfurl into freedom. Let us commit ourselves to the way of peace. And remember our song, our unique and incredible song that is only ours to sing. Let us write it on the signpost of our hearts. Will you rise as you are able? And will you join my heart, your hearts with mine? It's okay, I won't ask you to do anything crazy. We're going to sing together.